Today I'm going to be talking about a Tascam Model 12 mixer, interface, recorder, and controller. I've had this about a six months, maybe. I don't think it's been quite a year, but for several months now. And I've used it for, oh, a dozen or so recordings just to play around and test it out and try some different things. Uh, but when I started, I had a few issues, and that's what I wanted to cover today was just uh, point out some of the frustrations I had. It's a super easy machine to work with, but it is takes a few little bit of a learning curve, let's put it that way. So there's a lot of good re tutorials online about how to record and do all that sorts of thing. But sometimes it's that basic setup that kind of stalls the process, especially if you don't use it all the time. So what I thought I'd do is run through just a handful of things I thought were important, just as you're a newbie with this thing, because you may have re experience with other DAWs and other recording devices, or other mixers for that matter. As I'm going through the rest of my topics I wanted to talk about today, I wanted to point out I'm going to be talking about only using it as a multi-track recorder. I'm not going to be talking about the DAW interface or using it as a live mixer. Uh, I primarily use this as a multi-track recorder, and so that's what I want to focus on. And so when you approach this, it's slightly different. So let's just start at, at the top here. One thing is when I bought this, I was looking at a Model 12 and a Model 16. And I guess when I was looking at the Model 16, there was a lot of talk about them being a analog on the mixer section, uh, which is apparently correct for the Model 16, but on the Model 12, it's analog only up to the gain. <laughs> so as soon as you get to the gain, everything else on down the line all the way through the rest of the, the signal chain is all going to be digital. Not a huge deal, but just be aware that that the mixer portion, it really is a digital machine, that it's really not analog. Like I said, the only analog is just these the little preamps and that's it. So just be aware of that in case you had some other other thoughts about it. Next item I'd like to focus on is the mode switch. And if you're doing just a multi-track recording, you're probably only going to be using two settings. One is the live, and that's when you're doing the actual recording. And the other is MTR, which means multi-track recorder. So MTR is what you use to play back what's on that channel. Live is what you use to record on that channel. So those are the, really the only two things. So you're going to come in, say you do your guitar solo, and you play it back. When you play back the track, you're not going to hear anything until you go over to multi-track recorder. So it's, it goes without saying, but it may not be obvious when you first start using this device. And sometimes that takes a few practice sessions to remember which setting you need to look at right away. So you might have several of these switched over to live, so you might be recording drums a synth and a guitar or something with several people. When you go back to play the, the track off the SD card, you're gonna to have to go back over to the MTR side. So just keep that in mind so it's not frustrating. Next thing I wanna talk about this area over here where your display is. Uh, there's two primary controllers here. One is your multi-jog enter button, okay? And the other is the menu button. So these two really are the way you navigate through the system and they can get a little bit confusing at times. So mainly because I kept hitting the, the enter button for whatever reason and then the multi, I was kind of going back and forth. So I just want to explain what they do. So the menu, it's logical, but you don't always think that while you're trying to record stuff. Your menu takes you to the different menu choices. Okay. So that's your, your transport or your actually your, the song that in the, the counter and everything uh, as I'm going through. And this is your menu of the different selections you'll have. And if you hit it again, it goes back. So you, so it has just a, a couple of choices on the menu at this point. Uh, what you do not, what you would do next is you can hit the multi-jog button or knob to go through the various choices. So for the most part you're going to be going to song and you're going to select your song. And let's just select this guy here. It'll load it. Okay. Now it just kind of sits here on that song list so you don't see the transport keys or anything or the transport counter you would have to go back to menu to change the menu or to change the screen okay and there are several other buttons which i'm not going to spend too much time on those but um these are the levels of the different depending on how you're using the device but we'll just leave it as is for now okay so just be aware that the menu is going to take you through different menus and the multi-jog will be what you use to select things okay so there's a lot to, lot, this thing can do an awful lot, so uh, we're going to keep it simple though. The next part I want to focus on is the headphone 
out. Okay, and so oh, that's pretty straightforward. You've got two headphone outs, okay, which is nice, and we'll stick it in one. All right, now when you're using this and you're recording or you're playing back, your studio monitors and your main speakers are set up. I've got my monitors, my little near near field monitors are set up on the sub. And I've got it marked for monitors. Um, and the main then will be where your headphone volume is going to come through. Now what happens is if you've got like I've got a stereo system goes through a mixer and just regular stereo speakers and that's my main. So you won't get any volume out of your headphones unless this main is turned up and, and obviously your volume on that headphone one okay or headphone two whichever one you're on but what will happen though is when you turn this main up like in my case I've got it going through a stereo uh, it'll start playing through the stereo system so what you need to be aware of you would need to turn your volume down on your if you have a, a different mixer or something so I've got a separate mixer that the all the various I've got my keyboards my model 12 my PC if I have any other tape a tape deck connected up to my system. I'll just call it the house system, but it's a stereo system. Uh, so pr everything goes through that just for general listening, not for mixing. And if that's not turned down while you're trying to do your monitoring of your headphones, it'll come through your stereo speakers. Is there some AFL and PFL keys around scattered throughout on here? If any of those are turned on, so if I'm on AUX1 and I hit the AFL, you notice this little red light comes on here, PFL, AFL. So what that does, it messes with your messes with your meter section here and it won't show up properly. So it's just keep that in mind. If you're not getting any signal on your meter while you're recording or playing back, that's because you've got this uh, AFL button pushed, okay? And if there's several on here, and I, I just don't use those, so I generally just keep them off but if you are a person that uses those or when you first get this device and if a button's pushed down you don't realize it uh, or if you see this red light on you'll need to undo that so you can actually see your the meter function properly and I'm not sure there may be some other settings so you can actually monitor that when you're doing uh, after fader levels things like that that should probably show up on here that I'm not familiar with so I don't use that function but just be aware that that might you might find that frustrating so the Model 12 comes with this extra phone cable, hook up to your phone, and it's got the multiple, let's see if you can see that or not, but it's got the multiple, it's not a TRS, it's like a TRRS, I guess is what they call it. So you can plug that into the back so you can plug that into your phone. And what happens as soon as you plug this in, even if you don't have your phone plugged in, it disables channels the inputs for channels 9 and 10, the quarter inch jacks in the back. So if you're expecting to have your, I've got my drum machines come through this, through channels 9 and 10, and so if I'm plugged into 9 and 10 with my drum machine, but I've got this plugged in, I'm not going to get my drum machine because this is just, this is disconnecting the quarter inch jacks in the back for 9 and 10. So just be aware of that because sometimes I'm somebody I like, to, I like to plug everything in, there can't be an empty hole back there. And I thought, well, I'll just plug this in, not that I'll ever use it, but I'll have the cable there just in case that one time I ever use it. And I, I didn't realize, I, I couldn't get any signal to my 9 and 10 with my drum machine until I realized that this was plugged in, overriding that signal. So that can be very frustrating if you if, when you first get this and you start plugging in stuff and they interfere with each other and it's not expected. So I thought getting to your songs and doing functions with your songs was a little bit, a uh, little wonky. You just have to get used to it. But that's why these this menu and multi-jog button are important to understand their functions. So say I want to go to a song. Okay, see how I have to go through the different menus here. So I've got my, my main screen for the song and then the menu. So here I can select my song. So I would select and let's go to this thing called Ben Bounce 01. Okay, so we'll select that and we'll load it. Okay, now we're just sitting there and it, it we're just guessing it's installed. It does have an asterisk there to show that that's the active song, but sometimes if you're just looking at this stuff, it's not always obvious. Uh, the, and here's Ben Bounce 01 again on the screen. So just be aware that it's kind of hard to find if you're not paying attention. This may not jump out at you as being the song you want. And the way the task cam defaults to it, the numbering system can be extremely confusing. That's so I've got to the habit of always putting some sort of, trying to put some sort of descriptive name on here 
uh, with the rename function, which is a little bit cumbersome as well, but whoop. But it does work. So anyway, so I just wanted to mention that. As you're playing back your song, you may want to add effects to it. And I really do like the effects on this. I like using the delay quite a bit uh, on playback to record, to do a final mix down with, depending on the, the instrument that's involved. But I really like doing that. But what happens is if you have, if you're going to select your, I'll hit the select button and turn it off and I'll turn it back on again. And let me do that so you can see it on the, on the little screen. Okay, the little screen could be worse, so I'm not going to complain too much about it. So as I hit select on the effect section, it changes to the effect, okay? So if you're doing any kind of work trying to play the song or whatever, it's not, nothing happens here because when you're in this, this section here, you can't do any other effects on the tape drive or, or any other commands on the tape drive. You have to exit or off, one of the two, uh, the, to get out of the display section. So once you're back here, then then you can start playing it again, okay? Okay, let's say we want to delete a song. And I'm always trying to be super careful when I do that. So I'm going to go to... So I've got this song here that's active, the Ben Bounce, and that's good, okay? So it shows up as being with the little asterisk there. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to delete a song. Which when you first get these, you'll have plenty of songs you want to delete. Whoop. And this is what's confusing about it. So we're going to go to song, okay? And this one I want to delete is this one, song 01, okay? And it's zero megabytes, but it was just something I started screwing around with and then decided, went on to the next song or whatever, or I didn't know what I was doing at the time, most likely. Uh, so what we need to do here is we want to select the song, but we don't want to make it active. We want to do something with it. So if I said load, that would make that song active but I don't want to make the song active because I want to delete it, okay? Uh, before we do that, maybe we'll look at a rename real quick too because it's kind of in the same part here, rename. And so when I do this, this song is not active. It's just in a rename mode. And when we delete it, it's going to be in a delete mode. So we'll just put this um, UV up. Whatever, just put a bunch of letters in there. Okay, so we've changed this name to UPOH1. Okay, and we'll hit OK. Ba -da. And so as we scroll down, okay, there it is again. So we've just renamed it, all right? So it's not active though, because if we go back to the song that's active, whoop, Ben Bounce, okay, that's the active song because it's got the asterisk there. Okay, so let's go back to the song we want to delete. All right, so again, we're going to select it here. We're not loading it. And obviously there's other things you can protect, unprotect, you know, clear all marks and do all that sort of thing. But uh, this is kind of a function I think a lot of people will use quite a bit. Hopefully not too many deletions, I guess, but okay. And then it does the double, double check, make sure you want to delete it. Because once you delete it, it's gone. So uh, there's no phantom backups or virtual backups or anything like that. It's, it's gone when you do this. So are you sure? Yes. Okay, and now as we go down to the bottom there, that song is no longer there, okay? But our song, Ben Bounce, is still the active song. So when you do anything to the other songs, it can't you can't delete or rename or do these other things if the song is active. So that's the key point there. And I'm gonna say when you're recording, you probably wanna run everything flat. Uh, I wasn't doing that initially, but I think now knowing that the signal is going through all this digitally and gets recorded after this, for some reason I thought it was getting recorded before it even hit the compressor. I, don't ask me why I thought that. Uh, and so I was thinking when you come back to play it, then you would do your final EQs and stuff like that, but um, you would actually do your final EQ compressing effects and things like that. You would do that on your final mix down. Uh, so don't think that that's something you can undo uh, having your <laughs> bass cut and your treble maxed out like that or something. So uh, just be aware that that's the case. Because I did do some heavy compression on some guitars at one point which it turned out okay, but I think that's something wasn't the ideal way to do it. Uh, if I had over compressed, which I think I had in a couple of spaces then I, I couldn't undo it, uh, but it's easier to add compression because you can't take it out. Uh, same thing with some of the effects and things. You can't pull out effects after you've recorded them in. So all in all, these are great machines. I think for the, for the money, they are outstanding. Tascam has been uh, one of the top cutting edge suppliers of multi-track recorders since for the last 
35, 40 years or something. So they definitely have their act together. And this series of the Model 12, 16, and 24, uh, really, I just, I think they've hit them out of the park on this one. So I had a Korg D3200 before this. A wonderful machine. It did so much more than I could ever ever dream of actually using it for. Uh, but that was a problem because everything was very menu driven and even doing a queue on that machine, you had to go through the menu and it just got ridiculous. So uh, with this type of machine, it's more traditional layout as a mixer. It does have the compressor put in, and, which is nice. And I guess the last thing I would say, it's not really frustrating. It's just taking your time and paying attention to what you're doing. Because a lot of times you're gonna be by yourself and you're kind of, you're getting your final mix together or your final recordings and is what button you're on because several times I'll hit, I want to do a record. Um, and when I'm not paying attention, I might hit mute instead of record, or I might not hit record at all, and then start recording, and then get, get into the song a bit, and then realize, oh, I'm not recording anything. Uh, so that's something just to watch out for. That's more just me making mistakes. Uh, you may not have that problem, so you may, you may not have to worry about it. But anyway, so these, these are great machines. If you have any other uh, thoughts or suggestions as far as things you found frustrating. Uh, I know this thing with the headphone and some of the output with the AFL and PFL things were, were rather frustrating at first, um, but if you can just get, avoid some of those issues and the machine is, is super smooth to use and I really haven't had any problems once I got over that, that learning curve. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really liked it and learned something, maybe subscribe, yay. And if you would like to support this channel, I do have a link to it for a one-time donation. Uh, just be a dollar or two or whatever you feel is appropriate. If you felt that you learned something, it was worth it. Uh, I have a link in the description section. You can, you can donate there. Uh, I use those funds, which I don't have a lot and I don't expect to get a lot out of there, but I do put all that money back into uh, producing these videos and getting the equipment I need. Uh, so if you have any suggestions, please put them in down in the comment section. And I'd like to thank you very much for watching.